Hi, this is Belinda with Belinda's Bobbles, and welcome to Christmas in July, day 27. We are in Aurora, Texas, which is about 20 minutes away from where we live, and Sam has come out with me so that we can tell you a little bit of a story. I am hoping I can cut out all this highway road noise because there's a lot of road noise right behind us, but I wanted to show you the entrance to Aurora, Texas. Now, Aurora, Texas has about 1,500 people in it. It's a small town, and that's close to, and that was as of 2022. There's about 200 more from 2020 to 2022. So it is a growing community again. It started with the early settlers coming in around 1850, and it has a UFO story. In, and I'm going to wait and let Sam tell you that because we're actually going to go out to the only known alien grave site in the world. This little town has something that famous. Starts with Ned over there, who is buried here. He crashed up against um, a windmill in his cigar-shaped, this is not cigar-shaped, but his cigar-shaped UFO. I don't know how true this story is. Um, Aurora did not want to have anything to do with this story till about 10, 15 years ago, and they realized they were missing out. This little tiny town was missing out on some publicity to get people here, even if it was UFO hunters. Now, there are a lot of stories and videos out there if you want to learn more about it. Um, we don't have all the information. We're not going to try to give you the, all the information. I just wanted to kind of take you on this little journey out here and see what we can find. Okay, we're here out in front of the Aurora Cemetery. And it has a Texas historical marker here, which I wanted to read to you. Aurora Cemetery, the oldest known graves here, dating from as early as 1860s, are those of the Randall and Rowlett families. Finnis Dudley Beaucamp, 1825 to 1893, a Confederate veteran from Mississippi, donated the three-acre site to the newly formed Aurora Lodge No. 479, which was, was Masonic, is my belief. In 1877, for many years, this community burial ground was known as Masonic Cemetery. Bo Camp, his wife Caroline, 1829-1915, and others in their family are buried here. An epidemic which struck the village in 1891 added hundreds of graves to the plot. Called spotted fever by the settlers, the disease is now thought to have been a form of meningitis. Located in Aurora Cemetery is the gravestone of the infant Nellie Burris, 1891 to 1893, with, it, with its often quoted epitaph, As I was so soon done, I don't know why I was begun. This site is also well known because of the legend that as a spaceship crashed nearby in 1897 and the pilot killed in the crash was buried here. Struck by epidemic and crop failure and bypassed by the railroad, the original town of Aurora almost disappeared. But the cemetery remains in use with over 800 graves, veterans of the Civil War, World Wars I and II, and the Korean and v Vietnam conflicts are interred here. This was set up in 1976 to commemorate it as a historical site. Hi, this is Belinda and Sam with Belinda's Bobbles, and we are in Aurora, Texas Cemetery. Um, I asked Sam to join me today because Aurora has a little bit of a history with the ufology community. Would that be correct? Yeah, that's right. And I wanted Sam to tell us a little bit about it. Well, I don't know very much. I can tell you this. Uh, it's pretty famous in uh, UFO alien circles. When I was younger, when Belinda first met me, the poor thing, we, uh, I, I used to believe in these things. I used to believe in aliens. I used to believe they came from wherever. 
Uh, and this was one of the bigger stories. In 1897, there was a, a wave of sightings of what they would call airships started at the West Coast. And from what I can tell, what I know, what I've read, it pretty much ended here. Uh, there was a judge, his name was Judge Proctor. Uh, this airship, skyship, whatever they called it, crashed it into Judge Proctor's windmill, tore it up. And the city, town, the, the people here, and they gathered up what they called a Martian at the time. Apparently it was a small person, a uh, small stature. They didn't know what to do. They gave him what they called a traditional Christian burial. And this right here is pretty much the exact spot. Now, what Bun and I have just found out what we're discovering, obviously there's been tons and tons of tourism out here. So what's happened, I think they've had to move it over more to the center of the the cemetery closer to the street and that makes sense it would keep people from like us <laughs> yeah there's been quite a few tv series uh series and uh, shows documentaries about this stuff it's easy to look up uh look up aurora texas aurora texas cemetery or uh, 1897 airships and i think you'll find it we came out here probably about anywhere, I guess, close to 15 years ago. Good thing. I think it was close to 15 years ago. We brought Seaver with us. Yeah, he was about that tall. And we photographed him, which I have no idea where that um, photograph is at this point, near the stone marker at that time. Um, the stone markers kept being stolen. And so this is the area that we believe, that we remember, um, near the trees. And there are some graves from the 1890s right around us right here. Now, where we're standing right now, there are no graves in this general area. Mm -hmm. So we believe that we have marked it correctly. But I'm also going to take us over to what they have set up as the memorial grave site. I just remember one other thing they may want to look at. If somebody wants to look it up, uh, there was a Dallas Morning News. I believe that's what the paper was called at the time. Uh, Dallas Morning News uh, newspaper article, and I think they covered it for two or three days. So you can look that up as well. Yeah, because this is one of the earliest sightings that was actually listed in the newspapers. It was documented. All right, so we're going to move over to where they have set up now for the actual memorial. And by the way, I don't believe in aliens anymore. Okay, so this is the marker that they have set up and they've had to make a very large marker. The last one we saw was probably about the size of our head here, Wilbur, which we'll tell you about in a moment. And we're not leaving him behind, but other people have left all sorts of stuff from peanut butter, a heart, pennies all around, an eagle with a fish, some little aliens, and I've got someone who has drawn a um, alien head, put their name and their and the date in March when they were here. Even lottery tickets and someone I mean, bacon, Pokemon. There is all sorts of things here that have been left behind by people that have come here, and. As Sam said, this is fairly famous within um, the UFO community, or what is it called now? UAP. UAP, UAP community, which is more current. But uh, we actually went to the 75th anniversary for Roswell. We set up a booth outside, and we actually... Um, had some different things we sold. I made some jewelry. Sam had some wire, um, light up wire stuff and t-shirts and stuff that we sold there. But while we were outside of the um, Welcome Center and Museum, a gentleman came up to us. He was riding in a electric wheelchair or scooter, older gentleman, 
and he just started talking to us. And he told us he wanted to tell his story. And what he told us was that him and his sister were probably about six to eight years old. They lived outside of um, Roswell on a farm, and he remembered his recollection of seeing the UFO crash. Now, I am not a firm believer, I can tell you that. I think there's things out there that we don't understand and that we don't know, and that it would be arrogant of me to say that God didn't um, create anyone else. But I am not someone that follows after this, but Sam has always had somewhat of an interest in it and a curiosity, so I've learned quite a bit through him. But anyways, this gentleman came up to us, and I'm looking for his signature, yes sir? Okay, the gentleman, um, Sam and I were having two different somewhat recollections, you know how all that goes, uh, but I asked him to sign this, so I know his name was Don Clements, because that's the name I have on the bottom, and uh, he wanted to just tell someone his story. Stanton Friedman, who was um, there that day and was pretty big in the UFO community, he's since passed away. He was inside signing books and talking to people. I went in and told him that I had somebody outside who was saying that they were an actual witness to Roswell's um, UFO crash and that wanted to speak with him, but was unable to come inside. So um, we introduced him over, and the next day, Don came back and thanked us. Now, he had this little alien, which was originally a um, trick-or-treat um, container. And he had this attached to the back of his wheelchair. He even made a little flagpole that he glued on here to attach it in the back. And he tooled around with this on the back and he wanted to give us something to commemorate us just talking to him and being nice to him. And so he gave this to us and we've nicknamed him Wilbur. He is now our family heirloom and he is our link to Roswell and to the UFO community. So whether you believe in this or not, it really doesn't matter. I just thought this was an interesting story and that you might enjoy seeing a little bit about this little town in Texas that's actually only 20 minutes away from our house. Thank you so much for joining us. 